Amzie here of Amzie's Antics. Welcome to my channel. I hope you are well today because we have another Christmas crafty session to get stuck into. And in this week's video of the homemade Christmas series, I am going to show you how to make a Christmas shadow box with lights to add a little bit of something different to your Christmas decor and bring a lovely winter wonderland scene to life. Now these look great with the lights off and with the lights on. They look even more magical and Christmassy and just have that really mystique type of vibe to it. Now it does take a little bit of skill in paper crafting and I am using a version where you use lots of different tools but there is simpler versions where you print a picture and cut out with a knife. I'm not showing you that version, I'm showing you one with die cuts but it's still really easy to do. So if you would like to see how to make a Christmas shadow box with lights then let's get crafting. <laughs> To make the Christmas shadow box you are going to need the following, a die cutting machine, mine is a Sizzix Big Shot Foldaway I believe, as well as a 6x6 inch box frame, some adhesive foam and adhesive double sided tape, rulers, pencils, scissors and an eraser, not forgetting a craft knife, some white cardstock and some dies to cut out the various parts of the scene for the shadow box as well as some battery operated copper wire lights. The first thing to do is prepare your box frame. Now mine is a 6 by 6 inch one or a 15.2 by 15.2 centimeter um, box frame. I bought mine from Amazon and I will link it below if you want to purchase the same ones. Really good value, five in the pack. But what you want to do first is prepare this frame. So rearrange the layers of this so you will find that you have a glass piece and an internal spacer piece. What you want to do is place the glass right at the front of the frame and then the spacer piece will go on top of that. Because this shadow box is going to have some lights on it, we need to prepare a hole in the back of the frame so that the lights can be threaded through and applied to the project I guess. So what you want to do is mark where the battery pack finishes and what you want is one of these small slim battery packs um, because the bigger ones are a bit too clumpy and bulky for the frame. So mark where the wire will go in and then use a craft knife to cut out a hole in the back of the frame. I guess you could use a small drill bit for this but I found that a craft knife did the job just fine. Once you've cut out the hole, just thread through the light and then set this part aside for later assembling. So for the project, you are going to need four layers of white cardstock cut down to the size of 14.2 centimeters by 14 point two centimeters and then on the first layer which will be the very back layer you are going to cut out a circle i am using a set of nesting dies on the smallest circle in this i will link everything i use down below if you want to use the same as me and then just using a bit of washi tape to secure the die in place of where i want the moon for this part of the project to be Run this through the die cutting machine a few times and you should have a perfectly formed circle to emulate the moon in the winter scene. And then the first layer of the project is complete so set this aside and we're going to move on to the next layer. For the second layer I am using the Sizzix Village Christmas Scene type die here. Again I will link it below if you want to use the same one and what I like to do is actually cut out on a piece of old cardstock to be able to visualise a bit better where I want the next layer to start. So what you want to do is place it on that first layer and then measure down where the die cut actually begins and then on the blank piece of cardstock you're using for the second layer mark down where the die starts so that you know where to place the die onto if that makes sense then secure the die in place with some washi tape again now do be careful with washi tape because it can be extra sticky and rip the cardstock so when you're removing it you want to do this carefully run it through the machine and then remove that piece of die again 
remove the washi tape carefully because it does rip and you'll see later on I rip one of my layers. As this is a little bit more of an intricate die there are bits that you may need to push out so use your tip of your craft knife just to push out any of those windows and then you want to actually use the craft knife to remove that top part of the layer because that will block that moon and we are doing it in like a staggered layer so where the end of the die is you want to score with the craft knife and sort of make it look like a snowy slope so do this on both sides and then remove that top part so that you will still be able to see the moon when you put the layers together. Next it is time to prepare the third layer. So I am using some trees here and I, again I got this die off Amazon. It's unbranded I think so again I will link it below. So what you want to do is just play around with a, a scrap piece of cardstock where you want these trees to sit. Again measuring where that die starts and ends and marking it on the blank cardstock to then secure the die to and cut out. And here is where you see the epic washi tape fail and why you need to be really careful when removing the washi tape from the cardstock. So what you wanna do is make sure that you place the washi tape on bits that aren't gonna be included in the layer because it rips like this. Again, use the craft knife just to score and cut out where you want the slopes to be on the layer. Now with this die it does have quite a square edge so you need to sort of stagger this so it doesn't look so angular and more of a snowy scene and then it is time for the final layer with these cute deers in like a forest clearing now this is part of a bigger die set so i'll link them below again it's unbranded and from amazon so i will link it below for you and you just want to play about where you want this layer to start and end and because it is a little bit more intricate you want to make sure it is in the right position because you don't want it to take away from the design again secure it to the blank cardstock cut it out through the machine and then remove Again, remove all of the inner bits that need to be removed. You may need to use the craft knife to poke some of these out as well. And because this is like a semi-circle die, we are gonna have to cut round the edge as well with that craft knife. But first, you want to do the two edges. So again, making these look like a sloping snowy scene and then cutting around the edge of that die to make it more open and removing that top part of this layer so that you can see the rest of the layers that we have made. And the winter wonderland scene is now starting to take shape. To create a sort of glow of the moon, I am using a little bit of vellum paper just to stick on the back of this and it should help diffuse some of that light that is gonna come through. Now, if you don't have any vellum, you could use some greaseproof paper as well and use some double-sided adhesive tape to secure this on the back of that moon layer. Before assembling all the layers together, we need to add a bit of adhesive foam tape to this. Now I am using this one from Sizzix and they were really cheap on Amazon. However, you could use whatever foam tape you like. Now this was a little bit too thin, so I am putting one layer on and then re-sticking another layer over just to give it a little bit of double thickness. You want to make sure this goes around all four edges of each layer. Now. For the more intricate and smaller layers, this can be a little bit more difficult and you may need to cut little pieces of this out to fit in the spaces. And then it is time to start adding on them lights to the project so you want to use a little bit of sellotape just to secure the wire in place and then just manipulate the copper part of the wire to anywhere you want on the back of the frame 
to where you want them to be. Now, what I found is you, before you do any of this, you should really draw around that inner spacer because that is the space that we will be working within because that is what is going to be on top of all your layers to give it that dimension and push the frame out. Um, so your layers will sit inside of this. So you don't want the copper wire to be in the way. So stick them all down where you want them and then it is time to place on that top layer. Keep checking where you want the lights to be before you stick it down and you can manoeuvre this to your liking. Then you want to repeat the same process with the rest of the layers. But what is easy to do is mark where that layer starts with a bit of pencil on the layer behind so you know where to start threading the lights from and where you know the lights cannot go above. So you don't, you don't really want to see the copper lights. So make sure that you place these within that space that is marked, if that makes sense. And then keep repeating until all of your lovely layers are secured together. For the final layer, I wanted the copper lights to shine up where those cute little deers were. And I think I had about three of those lights left on the wire so I just manipulated this so that the two lights were within the right place and I marked it with a pencil so I knew roughly where each part was and then stuck the layer down on top. Now you want to make sure that the lights don't go into the foam, we don't want any fires happening here. And once all the layers are complete it is time to assemble it in the frame so you want to make sure the glass is first then that inner spacer and then all of your layers push down and you may need to keep fiddling with this to make sure that they are sitting in the right place and finally you want to secure that battery pack in place so I'm using some hot glue here and making sure that the screw side is the right side up so that you can replace the battery when needed and then your Christmas shadow box with lights is complete. They have how to make a Christmas shadow box with lights. Really simple project, but super, super effective. I love how this looks when the lights are low and it's just giving that lovely warm glow mysterious magical winter wonderland feeling to the project now you can change up the position of the dies to suit your taste and needs and just experiment where you want your different layers to start and end and you can really build up a really nice festive scene with this method there are other paper crafting methods that you can use to make these i have just gone for using a die cut method because I had them tools so why not use them so let me know if you have any other tips and tricks of paper crafting this type of project pop them in the comments i would love to know and also what you thought of this project put it in the comments i would love to hear your thoughts and if you enjoyed the video then please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with more of my crafting antics coming up onto the channel there is a lot more Christmas projects coming up into the run up to Christmas coming up onto the channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if it is something you are interested in. And don't forget to hit that notification bell as well because that should alert you each time one of my new videos goes live. Check out my blog Ames's Antics which is linked below because there's always a ton more information over on the blog for you to check out. And with that said, I will see you in next week's video and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and week and I will see you next time. Happy crafting, bye.